Pastor Wendy Mitchell continue healing. Pastor Greg Mitchell uh, taking the leadership of our fellowship uh, for God's guidance and wisdom. And then Pastor Jonathan Heinberg in Gallup, New Mexico. Pray for him. And our mother church in Amarillo, Texas, Pastor Steve, his wife, Cora, amen. Lift him in prayer. Again, uh, our first responders, our police officers, firefighters, EMTs, nurses, and doctors. Pray for them. Lift him in prayer. Uh, Stacy asks that we pray for her in, in her school. Uh, lift them in prayer. Uh, her and Clyde, they're, they're going to school to be nurses. Pray for them, amen. It, uh, it's a tough time this year that I've been talking to them. It's a tough time going to school to be a nurse when you can't go to a hospital and practice. Amen. Pray for them. Pray for them during this time uh, that, that God helps them, gets them through this time. Amen. They're able to get the, the proper education and the, and the learning that they need when they're not, when they're not able to be physically be there. Uh, pray that, that God helps them. Amen. You have a special need upon your heart this evening. Lift your hand by signifying that. Amen. We want to lift our voice to God. Let's also pray for people missing. Amen. For God to touch their hearts. Amen. And move. Let's go lift our voice to God. My son Mark was come over this prayer. God, we thank you, God. We love you and glorify your name, God. We ask that you move upon your people, God, in this service, my God. We pray that you come. Dear Lord, my state of peace on today's prayers that have been spoken and not spoken, Lord God. My state is just to please bring revival in this church, Lord. My state is just to please bring back the backsiders and bring in new commerce, Lord. God, my state is just to please be with our city and our state and our country, Lord. With everything going on, Lord, my state is just to please be with everybody in voting in our election, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's see you, God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Amen. You may turn around and greet each other this evening. Amen. You're, you're wanting to. Amen. short announcements before we get started just times of service sunday morning um nothing just regular service 10 30 in the morning sunday um, service uh, regular service and then in the evening again six o'clock that evening um, we have service that evening and then an hour before service come pray the church is open and then back again wednesday this saturday we are having an outreach you're able to available help if you want to come help us outreach we encourage you to come we want to come meet here at the church at 10 30 want to pray Get a hold of God, ask God for a favor, and God give us people to witness to, open hearts and open doors um, um, for this outreach that we're having this Saturday. Then, uh, um, so we're going to go out outreach for a little bit, and then um, we'll, we'll break off after that. Um, then um, we are having a revival on uh, September the 20th with Pastor Sean Davis from the South Side, a concert and outreach on the 19th. I um, encourage you to come be a part of this. If you're able to free your schedule up so you can come help us out, we'll be all day for Jesus that day, September 19th. I uh, want to outreach, um, have an impact team come help us, and then want to believe God. Amen. And so this is all the announcements we do have at this moment. As well, Brother Mark, we come and take up our offering. Just want to encourage you to see me. Amen. As God is faithful to us, amen, to continue being faithful to God. Amen. Because God, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. If you can give to God cheerfully, amen, without holding back, without grudging. God says, I'll pour back into your life and give as you have given to him. Amen. We have Brother Mark pray for our offering this evening. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless this offering, Lord. We ask you to bless everyone who came today and bless the people who could not come, Lord. We ask for a decrease from our offering to meet our needs, Lord. Some people here really have needs, Lord, that need to be met, Lord. And we know you're more sufficient than sufficient to meet those needs, Lord. We know you will meet them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You live the life. You live the life.
2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. I want to minister this evening on loyalty. This is something that you don't see today anymore in, in, in the household and in, 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 in just, in, in just in life as we go. We live in a generation of unloyal people, unloyal selfishness. Uh, we live in this generation today. But I want to minister today on remaining loyal. I want to look at a tech, portion of text where David and his um, some of his men that were following him, they rebelled and their loyalty towards David. It turned, and they were able to turn people against against David. Amen. Now, I came across a story called Remember Who You Work For. John Kenneth Colbert was a noted um, uh, economist in the early 1900s who was called upon by many de um, degenerates to help so, um, um, sort the um, economic market. He wrote the following story about his auto autobiography about his housekeeper. He said, it had been a, a, a wearing day, and I asked Emily to hold telephone calls while I had taken a nap. Shortly after the phone had rang, Lyndon Johnson was calling from that White House. Get me Galbraith. Um, this is Lyndon Johnson. He is sleeping, Mr. President, he said, um, to not disturb him. We'll wake him up. I want to talk to him. No, Mr. President, I work for him, not you. When I call the president back, he could scarcely control his pleasure. Tell that woman I want her here in the White House. Um, Emily, the house, the housekeeper, understood an important truth. She was a servant to one man and obeyed uh, his wishes explicitly. Her, her loyalties were to Mr. Galbraith alone. I you know this is a great example of loyalty and servanthood. Amen. Amen. The definition of loyalty is a strong feeling of, of support or allegiance. Amen. I you know we need to be loyal to the God we serve today. Amen. You know, the world wants to pull, amen, wants to take that away from us today. The world is trying to, to, to grab the hearts of men and women, and, they're, and, and, they're see, and they're, they know where to seek. They know where they can seek the young. Later on, they'll take away their loyalty towards their God, amen. amen. Here in America, you see um, lately in the past, amen, uh, 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 of uh, uh, many sports figures, amen, of uh, uh, taking a knee down, amen, uh, and, and also a right, rightfully protest, amen. But many people have turned their back towards America because of this. Amen. I know many veterans today who served in the war, served in Afghanistan, Iraq, in Iraq, who said, you know, if I was asked to re, if they asked me to re-enlist, if they called me back, I would go in an instant because I'm loyal to my country. I'm loyal to my to my branch of military. But when it comes to loyalty. I want to look at this portion of text where rebellion started towards David and all was lost. In our text, 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. And there happened to be a rebel whose name was Sheba, the son of Virgin, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, we have, share, uh, we have no share in David, nor do we have an inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, so Israel. So every man of Israel dis, um, deserted David and followed Sheba. The son of Bridget, but the men of Judah from the Jordan, as far as Jerusalem, remained loyal to their king. Amen. You know, this man Sheba, he was probably a man, amen, with a considerable power or influence. If you read, he, he, he served under Saul, under King Saul. He belonged to the tribe of, of Saul's tribe and the dynasty, and they sought to overturn David's authority. So people looked at this man as a man of authority. People looked at this man. Oh, this man, he, he followed the king, King Saul, at one time. Here we have an influence that is filling away the, uh, uh, pulling away the loyalty that was following Jesus. I know there's an influence out there today who's pulling away from the hearts of people who's following Jesus right now. Amen. Many people are scared to confess to be a Christian. Many people don't want to, to whatever God has spoken about, whatever Jesus Christ has spoken about, many people stay silent. When it comes to sin, many people stay silent about the issue of judging my, or your fellow brother who's living in sin. Say, you know what, you're wrong, but you know, I want to stay silent because you know what? I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to offend you. We live in a generation today of selfishness. This is where we live today. The spirit of me. It's all about me. What can you do for me? We witness in the stores 
Whenever the, the, this uh, COVID-19 hit, you witnessed in the stores all essential goods was off the shelf. From toilet paper, sanitizer, sweet tea, and all of groceries. Can't live without sweet tea, amen. <laughs> but this generation today only thinks of itself. This generation today only thinks of itself. What can you give me? What is it that you can do for me? I will only serve you. I will only follow you if you're going to give me something. Many times I get many phone calls almost every day. Hey, I'm, I'm down on my luck. Can you help pay my utilities? I'm sorry, we cannot. But you know, if you trust in the Lord, amen, if you, if you come and you, and you trust in God, you believe God, God will make a way. Oh, how can you tell me that? Because I've seen God do it. We have living testimonies here in this church where God made a way. That's right. yeah, that's right. Loyalty is rare today. Especially in the church. Especially in the church. Our mother church, they, they, they moved, um, they, they, they've lost a lot of people. Men and women, disciples. Men and women who went out into the field and preached the gospel. Hearts have turned to selfishness. Pastor Steve and Carico, he, he's pretty much rebuilding the church all over again. He relocated. He's pretty much re-pioneering just like we're doing. A 20-something, a 27-year-old church, 28-year-old church is re-pioneering. But can't tell you how faithful God is. Amen. The faithful God, our pastor, is still on full support. Amen. Our pastor is still able to preach the gospel full time and not have to work a job because of loyal people, amen, loyal saints. Amen. The religious world is all about who can make the best offer. People attend church for whatever they can get out of it. Coffee mugs. I've been there. I went to church. This is your first time? Yeah, I wanted my free Roasters coffee. If you ever go to Amarillo, they got Roasters coffee. And it's, it's like from heaven. Especially every Saturday morning, all across town, you can smell, them, smell it when they're roasting that fresh coffee. Amen. There was a church who was giving away a hammer to attract, to attract men in church. They were giving away, there was another church giving away gas coupons to bring families there to the church. Here in OKC, there's a church where they, when they, the pastor's taking the offering, he's saying when the bucket goes around, feel free to take whatever you need. Sadly, many people go to church just so maybe, maybe they can take what they need. People attend the church to get whatever they want. The religious world is feeding the consumer mindset. Some give lip service. Over the top of stroking the ego. The ego. They only come when they need something from you. Can't tell you, hard times reveals loyalty. Correction reveals loyalty. Success reveals loyalty. I face every single one of these in my, my, in my life and in my ministry. My heart was able to stay loyal to my God. Serving people produces loyalty, amen. Correction reveals loyalty, amen. Giving, 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 um, giving dignity. Giving expression reveals loyalty. So I want to first look at this evening is the rarity of loyalty. You don't see it today. You don't see it in marriages anymore. You don't see it with children and their parents anymore. 
You don't see it when we're in the church anymore. The illustration I read in the beginning was a picture of what to where a woman where a woman was doing. She has asked something by the most powerful man in the world, by the president of the United States. I want you to wake up your boss. She said, No. My boss told me no. He's taking a nap to hold all calls. He saw something. He witnessed something. He goes, this woman is loyal to her boss. I want her to work for me. I know when God sees your heart, amen, when God sees your loyalty, he says, you know, I'm going to use you. Loyalty is becoming more and more rare. Again, this is something that you don't see today in marriages, relationships. Again, serving God. 2 Timothy 3.2, it says, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, um, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despairs of good, traitors of headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. This is a selfish generation we live in today. Because selfishness rules in many people's hearts. I used to be selfish. It was I was selfish when it came to my giving. Selfish when it came to giving my whole heart to God. I know during this pandemic, during this crisis, then during the quarantine, many people had no choice. But now things are open and people still acting like, well, I'm, I'm still being selfish. I got to stay home. What can the church do for me? Sorry, I get a lot of calls. I'm sorry. I, I can't help. But I would like to, but I can't. How many times I get cussed out right after that? Even though it's a very good ministry, sadly, people receiving the help, unfortunately, never will lock into the church. Never will come in only unless there's a need. I've heard a story of a single mother going to church. She was struggling. And God had placed it in some people's hearts. They, they had bought a new home and they, their intentions were, we're going to just rent out our old house. But God placed it in their hearts. You know, I want you to give this house. Let this lady live in this house until she's able to get on her feet. They let her stay in this house. She was living there. Someone put, someone eventually gave her a vehicle. She has a vehicle on it. You know, all of a sudden, you know, no one's giving her things anymore. She quits coming to church. Somebody follows up on her and they say, what's going on? We haven't seen you. She says, there's no love in that church. This is a picture of selfishness. Because life reveals loyalty. Life happened this year. Life got very real this year. Life reveals loyalty. When things begin to go wrong, people all of a sudden disappear. Remember when I was in high school running in gangs? Everyone, we had some people, we knew they were fakes. They were just, they were just all about the talk. We knew whenever things were going to happen, you know, they were going to, oh, I, something, I, I had to go, I couldn't make it. Now, during a world crisis, people are facing right now, I want to encourage everyone. Remain loyal to God. If nothing else, remain loyal to God.
to your tithes and your offerings. Hard times reveals the hearts of men and women. Because it's very easy to become selfish during these hard times. Remember going to the grocery store, seeing people with two shopping carts full. They had to put signs, only one per customer. We're buying these. It said one per customer. Many people are going to receive a similar check where they already have. Can I ask you, where's your loyalty? Correction reveals. Being corrected by a pastor or people decide, well, they're going to stop going to church or I'll just stop and drop out of ministry. Can I tell you this evening that correction builds your character? I wouldn't be here today if I wasn't able to take correction from my pastors. If I wasn't able to allow my pastors to speak into my life and tell me when I was wrong, even when I felt I was right. Success reveals. Start making money. Obtain a level of independence where I need you no longer. Begin to, people begin to feel as if they don't even need God anymore because look where I've got myself. I've seen many men and women fall apart because of this very issue. One second to look at is cultivating loyalty. The balance of this is cultivating the challenge today is to see this in the church. To see something stirred up in the church, in the hearts of men and women. In the prayer room. During outreach. During a church attendance. During the will towards God. A culture needs to be generated within the church. People need to see your heart. People need to see, you know, see the example that we produce out. My prayer is that people is able to see, you know, our, our example of how we live for God and how our faithfulness towards God is. Galatians 5.13 says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh but through the love and service of one another. Serving people is crucial to cultivating wood. Jesus says, I have come to serve. Do as I do. Can you serve when your fellow brethren is in need? Can you serve when the church is in need? Because serving people is crucial to cultivate loyalty. Luke 25 says, And he said to them, The kings of the, uh, of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those who exercise authority over them are called uh, benefactors. But not among you on the contrary. He who is the greatest among you, let him be as younger. And he who governs as he who serves. Here Jesus is saying, who, who is greater? I hear Paul saying, um, Jesus is saying, he who is above you, let him be below you. Meaning, you got to serve. Third thing I want to look at is the heart issue. Because when it all boils down, being loyal is a heart issue. Everyone makes fun of me because I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. 
They haven't won a Super Bowl in many years. Jerry Jones runs the show. But I'm still a Cowboys fan. I'm still a Texas Longhorns fan. Every time I go to Coach Riley's office, I pray in there, lay hands all over the stadium. <laughs> but it's a heart issue. Many people leave God because it's a heart issue. Many people quit serving God because it's a heart issue. Many people have left because it's a heart issue. There's people who's here not today because it's a heart issue. The enemy will conspire against you to bring opportunity for disloyalty. Talking to a brother in Amarillo, he's going through some issues. Talking about wanting to leave the church talking to him. He said he tried out another church. He felt so uncomfortable. He said it felt like if I was cheating on my wife, he said. He said, that's God telling you, you know, you need to go back home. He made the decision. He called his, his brother, his older brother, talked to him, told him, and his brother told him the exact same thing. The devil's lying to you. The enemy will conspire against you. 2 Samuel 19, 43 says, And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten shares in the king. Therefore we also have more right to David than you. Then why do you despise us? We're not the first to advance, bring back our king. Yet the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Here they're feeling me. They're feeling, they're feeling like, you know, we're being betrayed. We're feeling that we're, the enemy's lying to them. All because David went to his family's house. They invited him to go eat at their house. Because David went to their house and not our house. Basically, they're throwing a fit over this. They're saying David didn't ask nothing from us. David didn't give us nothing. David, we didn't, we didn't give David nothing. We just fed him. He's our family member. He's out of our house. And here the enemy, he's making an issue out of this. The enemy will exploit any slight, real or even imagined. I've been there. The smallest things. I've been there. This is why the Bible tells us to put on the helmet of salvation. To be sober-minded. Because offenses are breeding ground for division. Who's been offended here this evening? Just me. No. I've been offended by people. And I know what it's like. You know what? Well, why did they say that? Why did they do that? What's their intentions? The enemy uses these little small things in our life. Your heart will determine how you respond. Do you seek God? Do you let it go? Luke 17, 1, he said to the disciples, 
It is impossible that no offense should come. But woe to him, though whom they do come. In other words, beware of those who would magnify your offense. Beware of sheep. Just throwing this out there. There's a reason why I personally don't do social media. I know we have it for the church. It's a very good tool. It's a very good platform to use, especially during these times that we live in. I know many people who have got so upset over a post. I know many couples who have gotten divorced over something. Beware of Sheba. The enemy will seize upon me trails to attempt to twist you. Sadly, we lost many people in the church today. But when this church has opened up, remember the fir our first major loss, almost half of our church gone. Great people. Wonderful people. Now, COVID-19 lost some people. Some people feel undecided. People who magnify betrayals to other people is a form of witchcraft. David went through this. And it's sad. People start with a right hype of betrayal twist them. And eventually become disloyal to God. This is what happened to Saul. In 1 Chronicles 10, 13, So Saul died for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. The crucial issue this season for you and I is the relationship that you and I have with God. Because without a personal relationship, I'm not talking about religion, not talking about just, that, oh, I show up to church. I'm talking about a personal relationship with God. It depends on our loyalty. Saul lost his relationship with God. Luke 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. Second Timothy says, for we are faithless. He, re he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Even when we're faithless, God remains faithful to you and I. God gives us the example of loyalty. Able to discern what loyalty should lie. Where loyalty should lie. Loyalty lies in God. Able to work out offenses. A loyal heart will fight to be loyal. A wrong heart will seize the smallest thing to be disloyal. She was seized on the smallest thing. David going to someone's house, a family member. If you read the story, we all know that Sheba, he still remained loyal to Saul as well. The first posture of a believer is reconcile. If reconciliation cannot be cannot happen, rebellion has just uh, has to be judged. Sheba ended up getting judged. If you read the story, you continue reading the text, they, they, they hunted this man down. 
She was running for his life. He's hiding in the city. The, the, the Bible says that the walls are very fortified. And here they are. They're getting ready to take the doors down. They're getting to take the gate down, the walls down. They come out and say, no, what do you want? And we'll help you. They explained to this woman what, what Sheba did. And you said that you're hiding him. If you don't bring him to us, we're going to go in and kill him and kill everyone in this city. This woman says, hold on one second. We will bring him to you. As they're waiting outside the city. Here comes a head flying over. They took the head of Sheba. They cut it off. He was judged. You are going to have, have to make personal stance towards sin, towards evil, towards words that are spoken, able to process betrayal and maintain a right heart. Loyalty is a probably the greatest need today in the Christian world. Loyalty is the greatest need in the Christian world today. Loyalty is the greatest need in discipleship as well. Amen. But it all starts with the heart. <laughs> to ask you this evening, where is your heart? Is it towards self-will? Is it easily influenced by others? Or does it remain founded and stable with God? If I can have every head bowed and every eye closed this evening. If you're here this evening in your heart, you're not saved, you're not right with God, you're not born again, amen. I want to pray with you. You're here live in person or you're on live stream. That's you. Just by lifting up your hand. Change the order of service just a little bit. Maybe you're living for God at one time. And somewhere down the line, your heart's turned. Maybe you were influenced by some way, by the enemy. And your loyalty towards God is gone. something wrong, you're cheating on your spouse or you know you shouldn't be doing this, you're feeling that feeling. I want to ask you to see me. Give your heart back to Jesus Christ. Turn from your sin. You want to see that? That's you this thing. I want to pray with you. If you lifted your hand on life, you know, you're here in person.
says, we love him because he first loved us. He loved us in our sin. He loved us in our rebellion, in our disobedience, in our turn, our, our cold hearts. God loved us. times like this that we live in. The best thing for you and I this evening is to remain loyal to God. Yes, amen. To remain loyal to God. Because we serve a God who is faithful. Who stays faithful to you and I. He's faithful when we're faithless. That's loyalty. That's love. Can we keep our hearts right with God? Can we keep our hearts loyal towards God during these times like this? Amen. I want to encourage you. If you're able to come help us outreach, amen, I want you to help us come be a part. Amen. We're going to go for a little bit. We're going to believe God. Amen. We're going to believe God for revival, for God to move. We'll see what God does. Amen.